So I haven't done a video in a while uh, with me talking about the world situation and stuff, just because it's been a lot of the same stuff. Um, so I guess the notable news is that fires are making a big uh, imprint in the public media outlets right now. The capital of the Northwest Territories was under an evacuation order this weekend, or this past day or so. Um, that's still only 20,000 people because there's not a lot of people in the north, uh, relatively speaking. But uh, as far as being a regional capital and really it's a, a third of the Northwest Territories is on fire or something like that, uh, or under evacuation notice and so on and so forth. It's actually a very large land area that's affected. And it's not just uh, Yellowknife that is uh, affected. That's the, the city sort of. Um, so it's actually, a lot of areas in uh, northern Canada that are under sort of evacuation or are surrounded by fire right now. So over the next week or so, it is possible that a couple other places may um, be affected by evacuations or being burned out. Um, so just pointing back to civildefensecanada.com, um, there is just some information there just as a primer to get people familiar with the idea of evacuations and wildfires. Um, but basically, the, you need to have insurance or being uh, firefighters and truly a matter of resources. Once fires get big enough, all you can do is build, uh, you know, burn backs and firewalls and stuff like that, which should have been built ahead of time around these major communities. It's just that we're protecting the woods rather than managing them uh, to a certain extent. So, um, you know, along with this housing issue for Canada, uh, what they need to do, I suppose, is... Uh, you know, uh, make more lumber for building stuff, even though wood isn't necessarily an ideal building material, it is a building material. Um, so increase wood supply for this and build break walls around uh, northern communities and you know, utilize the resources that are available locally, but also have a civil defense plan or fire plan in place that actually manages the fire risk. I'm not talking about cutting your lawn, but that can help in some areas. Um, but actually, making it so fire can't get to these communities. Um, same with the irrigation ditches and otherwise. These are all things that can be built into infrastructure. It's just that no one wants to spend on public resources unless, uh, you know, it's a private company making money and uh, it's for some essential need for the corporations or otherwise. And really, they, the protection won't get built because uh, it doesn't happen often enough. So it's like these 100-year floods, but I think uh, the reality people need to come Two is that uh, these incidences of environmental destruction are going to become more and more common. So, you know, these weather shifts that are predicting the, the state of weather patterns of, you know, hot and wet, hot and wet, um, and then super cold, extra cold, snow dumps, and so on and so forth, because with more heat, there's more moisture in the air, and it causes more dramatic t uh, climate swings or uh, weather swings. Uh, it's just the way it is, and yeah, so, you know, it's just, no one's at the, the, the piloting the ship. It's just these, like, agendas for these political games, and, you know, it, it is, something is happening with it, but they're not really acting locally to deal with these issues, nor do they have the public in place, because it's a private society, right? So, as a libertarian, I can appreciate that, you know, People can do their own thing, but as a minarchist, somebody who believes in minimal government, um, I also think that people's rights need to be equal, and we all need to be involved in the community to make up for the shortfall in, in uh, public control. So if the government isn't controlling these things, then the public needs to step up and volunteer for things like ensuring that there's fire management plans that are implemented. Um, you can do that through bylaws, but no one wants the government to dictate everything, but it's very possible that much like giving ranchers the ability to burn back fire and otherwise, um, as long as they're trained, receive the oversight for it. So they have the specialty knowledge uh, in place to make sure it's done properly. Um, there's no reason why the public can't do these things if they're actually empowered and educated. And sadly, in these northern communities, it's just like you have trees right next to the freaking road. It's just road and trees. And the people's cars are melting because like flame will reach like 
a long distance and he, the heat will reach a long distance. So, um, so she can go across any northern area. The only, like it's one road in Northern Ontario or one road in, in the north of Canada. Um, and they don't have it burned back or they don't have it uh, cut back. It's just, they're not planning for a fire blocking off access to that roadway. And all those resources could be used for biomass, uh, for building resources, for community projects, or otherwise. They could do something else with that roadside, but just too much work for people to worry about. And now their entire capital is at risk of basically burning down. So same with these communities get burned down. Like, they're not protecting them. Okay, so that, that's that point, I guess. And then, oh, the war. So the war. Um, they're talking about peace again, but I, I would be very surprised to see anything come for that because uh, Russia's like, you know, give us Kiev and we're, we're good. Uh, which I don't think Kiev is going to agree to. So uh, that's like deal, no deal. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, this war's going on long enough. We, we're, since we've already given all our stuff and we don't really want to give more stuff because we don't have it, um, let's just call it even and, you know, end the war. But uh, that's not going to happen. So... I don't know. I think that going into the winter, we'll see what happens with Europe and energy supplies going into the recession. The global economy is going down. We have the food crisis uh, increasing. Um, the fun thing yesterday or last night was uh, my favorite Canadian prepper, uh, Doom and Gloom nightly segment. Um, he actually used vulgarity to say, we're fucked. And I, I found that incredibly hilarious. And I don't think we're fucked, but um, things have been escalating since uh, you know the past few years, and I think it could continue to be this way. Like it's not like you know all these issues just suddenly disappear overnight because like they're not like fundamental problems that are escalating, um, being built upon, built upon. So it's, it's, expect more of the same. That's what people have been saying. Stock up, stock it to the graphers. It's really that simple. And these problems with AI management, government control, government crackdowns, government regulation for what you can buy, what you can do. You know, these are all nightmares for libertarians. But um, it's just the way it is. And, you know, it's, it's technology. So I think that's... I'm kind of draw blanks at this point. But um, there's so much to talk about in terms of you know, what's going on in the world. Um, but it's more of the same. So if, if you're new, get get appraised to what's new in the world uh, for prepping and otherwise, because it's a lot of the same stuff. They've been talking about the same stuff since the 1990s. It's just, it's actually happening uh, at a more and more frequency now with more and more capability now. So it's the same stuff, keep cycling, they keep talking about it. Population management. <clears throat> All that said, are we screwed? No, things aren't that bad. Um, they've gotten tighter, but I'm a, a poor bastard, cheap bastard, and I'm still able to do my essentials and, uh, you know, some other stuff too. Uh, I'm still able to act pretty much how I all, always have. It's just that I need to uh, do a bit more stuff from... You know, you, the more you prep, the more you have a capacity to do your own thing. So uh, you can build your own resources. You can make your own food supply. <clears throat> Even not gardening this year, I have, like, things like potatoes and tomatoes and stuff like that. And I, I didn't even really plant anything. I, like, spread some seeds. Uh, the potatoes were there from last year. So once you get yourself set up, it, it's easy. Uh, or, of course, you can always have catastrophe but that's what you also plan for so um you know I, I don't think things are done for in any sense of the word but i think there's a lot a lot more unpredictability on uh major events happening like nuclear war that, that could happen any day but probably won't hopefully in the short term so just what it is what it is what it is and you know the, the economic situation financial collapse ever grand this stuff isn't new we know when it's going to happen bank collapses we've known it's going to happen 
financial system, interest rate increases, inflation. We know this stuff's going to happen. Um, so this is not new. It's not surprising. This is why I'm not mentioning it. And I haven't really made one of these uh, talking things in a while because it's all the same old shit. So just more of the same. Um, boiling frog since 2020, really. And I don't know. We'll see what happens this winter. But uh, without major uh, cyber attacks or electrical grid being taken down, or nuclear war, um, you may see the war continue to advance and escalate in uh, inky milk cups, I think. Oh, look at all those. I think they're inky milk cups, so these are edible, technically. You just can't have them with alcohol. I'm not actually supposed to pick these, though. But uh, personally, I don't really think they're tasty mushrooms in any sense of the word. But uh, look at that. That's why they call them inky milk caps. Anyway, um, yeah.